Cycling as a sport is obviously our most successful sport at the moment and I've been very proud of being part of that. But not only that is cycling took a business model until I wasn't able to read or write when I left school. Quite vain enough to say that I learned to read and write by reading about myself in cycling magazines. Thank you. And for you to be right at the top of that pinnacle of that, of that triangle, there's so many people along the way who's going to knock you down, there's so many people who's going to be pushing you to the limits and actually make, I don't know, there to beat you. And this is what me and Johnny was talking about really, is how if you take it in the business scenario, there's so many businesses out there, isn't there? There's so many people who you're in competition with to get business. And how through the way we worked and how sport works, how we could actually support you guys into actually making sure that you're that Olympic finalist or you're that Olympic champion. And how through using a vision and also evaluating and planning and, and, and actually mapping out how you're going to do that, how are we actually going to make you guys in successful businesses or more successful businesses and make sure that you're at the pinnacle of that, at the top of that tree. That was really just really to sum up the young person I was. I was pain in the backside. I have learning difficulties. I suffer from dyslexia. That's my excuse for all the spelling being wrong in this. But uh, yeah. Uh, but that's really where my, my trouble started really. I used to always have uh, problems with my weight as well. Uh, and really when I went up to secondary school I got bullied and we know now what we didn't know then actually bullies turn in people being bullied turn into bullies and that's what happened to me. And sort of led me to be into more and more and more trouble really and to be in trouble with the police outside of school and all sorts. My brother who I think some of you have met is about twice as big as me, I can say that because he's actually three times bigger than me. Uh, uh, he, uh, he started cycling, uh, he went with a school trip, uh, went on a cycling trip, he really enjoyed it, came back, joined the local club. And then one day my dad, my dad bought me a bike. I don't know why he thought about this. Uh, he just bought me a bike. And he said, look, Brian, look, you're in trouble. You know, you're overweight, you're unfit, you're always moaning. There's a bike, we're going to be there. There's no other way of you getting out of that. You're going to be sat in that back of the car. So how about giving it a go? If you don't like it, I don't care what you do with this bike. You could throw it in the canal, sell it, I don't care. But just give it a go to September. Just promise me you do that. And really, I'd say that probably moment, that way of just taking that moment and actually giving, being given that opportunity and taking that opportunity was, I'd, I'd be honest to say, it turned my life around. Straight away I enjoyed it, straight away it got me out of, out of trouble, straight away it got me energised, it got me fitter obviously. But also it gave me a goal and an aim in life, actually this is what I want to do. He took me under his wing really, mentored me in a way really to, to success. You know, within three years our aim was to get me on the national junior team, within three years he got me there. And really that's where my sort of my Olympic journey really started in 1987 really where I got the national team. And really my first major setback really is actually the 88 Seoul Olympics, I missed the team by one place. I shared a room with a guy called Chris Boardman who won a gold medal in the individual pursuit. And for him to, to win that and me seeing him changing his life, but more importantly, him coming back one evening with this lump of gold and on a piece of ribbon. I remember that night we were sort of sat down in the room and everything got quiet, everybody disappeared and he says, do you want to hold it or wear my Olympic medal? It's a bit of a thing about Olympic athletes, actually if you're trying to strive for that it's quite bad luck to hold somebody else's and uh, I sort of said yes. About 45 minutes later, good Brian, you really need to give me that back and he had to sort of prize it out of my fingers, this Olympic medal. So I just thought I'd just really go on and, and that was my aim, my goal was to win this Olympic medal. Went on to Lantern in 96, which for everybody really was a disaster. I think we came home with only three or four, probably five medals of, as a whole. The good thing about that was actually, because we did so badly, the uh, National Lottery came in and actually the government funded. That was the start of the road of the success we've had in Beijing and obviously the success we're going to go on moving on to 2012. This is always my, this is my proudest moment really, is to win this Olympic medal. Because we went to Sydney ranked sixth in the world. All the best sports people use this profile of taking it step by step, day by day, mile by mile, 
I'm going to play a video in a minute about inch by inch, and that's what it's all about. He's doing it gradually at your own speed. I, there, I went on to Athens and uh, won a silver medal, which is not so impressive, and I'm not so, uh, I don't know, I don't feel so proud about this one, which is a bit bizarre. But what's special to me about this is actually, I went, the Queen gave me this at Buckingham Palace, which is a special moment for me. But more importantly, my wife was stood next to me and she'd never really been able to go away on trips or anything like that. So I always sort of say, this is my wife's Olympic medal and that one's my, my Olympic medal. We don't want sports people or anybody walking away with the if only. My brother did that. My brother got up to junior level on the national team and then walked away. I always say he found women and beer, but uh, I think he'd disagree with that. I can be happy enough to say that I never, I haven't got, within the sporting world, I've got no if only, so I've finished at the top. And that's really what sort of the emphasis, the sort of programme that me and myself and Johnny have been talking about, really, of how we can, I can support you guys into taking away those if onlys. So this is really the course, the overview of the course we put together. It's a three day course over three weeks and we're basically sort of getting you guys to sort of develop your vision. How many people know your vision? But if they know where they want to go, then obviously they can make decisions. Establish a baseline, actually, where are we now? What does your business do? Ultimately, do you guys know what your business does? Okay. Could you explain your business to a five-year-old child? Practice on Johnny, I'm sure he'll be all right with you. What's your ultimate goal of your business? What really do you want to achieve out of what you're doing now? What would truly outrageous success sound and feel like to you guys? They used to make us do that. I remember two days before Sydney, I'd never stood on the world or Olympic podium before, but I had a dream that I stood on that Olympic podium. It was in third, I know between 2000 and 2004, it went like that. It just went like that. And I think that's the easy thing you can slip into, is if you don't plan, set goals, and you, you know which direction you're moving in. It doesn't have to be a straight direction. It doesn't matter if you come backwards. But let's get a ro road established and let's get, let's get on that road. down. But if you start breaking it down to those small chunks, and let's get today and this week and next month done, then it all follows on. And before you know it, you have got success without even thinking about it, really. Yeah. Some of the work we're going to do on this course is actually making sure you get your team around you it's and the, the right people. And yeah. Yeah. Well, not negativity. You can be negative, but if you know why they're there and there for a reason, then obviously they're going to support you. All of all three, all three days of the course may not be all for you guys, but if you can just take one thing, that light bulb moment that's actually going to turn, make you go the next level with your business or we'll put your business in the thing that's job done for me, if you can sit there for three days and have me spiel about cycling for three days, but you get that one thing or two things or, I don't know, three or four things, then it's job done, isn't it, really? What we're trying to do is make you guys that take your business to the next level.